China has just taken a massive leap toward its dream of landing astronauts on the moon. The long March 10th, the rocket at the heart of this mission, has now passed its second static fire test at Wenchang. Seven engines roared, proving they can ignite together, throttle down, and even restart. This isn't just a test, it's a preview of the power that could carry humans to the lunar surface before 2030. On September 12, 2025, China's new generation Long March 10th rocket underwent its second major static fire test at the Wenchang spacecraft launch site in Hainan province. This wasn't a short check or a symbolic event. It was a full-scale, 320-second test of the rocket's seven clustered YF, 100K engines. At precisely 3 p.m. Beijing time, the ignition command was given and all seven engines fired together replicating the kind of sustained performance needed during an actual launch sequence. What made this test especially notable was not just the raw duration, but the conditions being examined. Engineers focused on low thrust operation, a scenario where engines must throttle down while still maintaining stability and efficiency, and on secondary restart capability. Restarts are notoriously difficult to achieve in clustered engine designs, because everything from fuel flow to ignition timing must work flawlessly across multiple units. The fact that the Long March 10th handled this successfully indicates its design has matured far beyond basic thrust validation. This second test followed the first static fire carried out, which concentrated on maximum thrust performance. During that earlier test, the 7YF 100K engines produced nearly 1,000 tons of combined thrust, the largest ground-based static fire ever conducted in China. Together, these two tests form a complementary set. One demonstrated the rocket's brute strength, while the second confirmed its finesse and reliability under different operational conditions. Beyond validating engine performance, this test also examined procedures linked to recovery and potential reuse. According to the China Man Space Agency CMSA, Part of the trial's mission was to ensure that the propulsion system could meet requirements not only for safe launches, but also for possible recovery of the first stage. That ambition places the Long March 10th family closer in philosophy to the reusable systems pioneered elsewhere, aligning with global efforts to make launches more sustainable. By completing both static fires, the Long March 10th has cleared one of its riskiest phases, proving its engines can handle varied thrust levels sustain long burns, and respond reliably to mission-like commands. The Long March 10th is not a single rocket, but a family of launch vehicles designed to serve different roles within China's manned lunar exploration program. At the heart of this family are two versions, the standard Long March 10th and the smaller, reusable Long March 10A. Both share common technologies but differ in scale, purpose, and mission profile. The Long March 10th is the flagship configuration. Standing 92.5 meters tall with a diameter of 5 meters, it is a three-stage rocket with two large strap-on boosters. Its role is clear, to launch the most demanding missions, including the Lunar Crewed Spacecraft and the Lanua Lunar Lander. Its size and power put it on par with some of the world's largest rockets, making it China's most capable vehicle for deep space human exploration. The Long March 10A, by contrast, is a more compact design at 67 meters in height and the same 5-meter diameter, configured with only two stages. Its most important feature is reusability. The first stage is engineered for recovery and reuse, a significant step forward for China's space program. This version is targeted at launches to the Earth-orbiting space station, carrying the Mengzhou crewed spacecraft or the Tianzhou cargo vehicle. By making this version reusable, China aims to reduce costs and gain operational experience with recycling hardware. Both rockets rely on the same core technology, the YF, 100K engines, arranged in clusters and capable of parallel operation. Clustering seven engines is not just about generating enough thrust, but also about coordinating fuel flows, thermal management, and vibration control. The static fire tests verified that this complex system can function reliably, whether under full thrust or throttled conditions. The differences in configuration reflect the dual strategy China is pursuing. One pathway emphasizes high capacity, expendable heavy lift for lunar missions, 
while the other embraces partial reusability for lower Earth orbit operations. This balance allows the program to simultaneously push forward with lunar exploration while gaining valuable experience in reusability, which could eventually be applied to larger vehicles. Critically, both versions of the long March 10th have now benefited from the recent engine tests. By validating thrust, restart capability, and recovery procedures, engineers have demonstrated that the propulsion backbone supporting both vehicles is sound. China's roadmap to land astronauts on the moon by before 2030 hinges on three main elements, the Long March 10th rocket family, the Mengzhou crewed spacecraft, and the Longyue lunar lander. Each component is being developed in parallel, but the rocket is the enabling piece. Without it, the spacecraft and lander cannot reach lunar orbit. The successful completion of two static fire tests means the launch vehicle is on track, reducing one of the major risks in the timeline. In recent months alone, CMSA has confirmed successful trials not only of Long March 10th, but also of supporting systems at the Wenchang launch site. New infrastructure, from vehicle assembly buildings to launch pads and recovery systems, is being built and tested to accommodate this new rocket. Peng Zhihao, a senior aerospace expert, emphasized that the second static fire test validated more than 50 key technologies, ranging from multi-engine synchronization to power system coordination and even the adaptability of the ground facilities. Each of these points is essential for a rocket that will have to perform flawlessly during crewed missions. The implications extend beyond engineering. Successfully validating Long March 10th strengthens confidence that China can realistically meet its stated goal of a lunar landing before the decade closes. This is not just about prestige. It's about creating an independent pathway for human exploration beyond Earth orbit. The Mengzhou spacecraft is intended to carry astronauts safely to lunar orbit, while the Longyue lander will deliver them to the moon's surface. Both rely on the heavy lift capacity of Long March 10th, and the rocket's readiness now makes these other elements more credible. Globally, this positions China as a leading contender in the new era of lunar exploration. While other countries pursue their own missions, China's steady, verifiable progress with Long March 10th shows that its timeline is practical rather than aspirational. For the international community, this test serves as a signal China is not just planning lunar missions, it is executing a well-defined roadmap to get there. In conclusion, the September static fire test does more than prove engines work. It marks a pivotal step in China's lunar journey. China's Long March 10th rocket is no longer just a blueprint or a prototype. It's a proven system moving closer to flight. With both static fire tests completed, the engines that could carry astronauts to the moon before 2030 have shown they can deliver power, precision, and reliability. The next big step will be actual flight tests, when we'll see this giant leave the pad for the first time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.